Dear friends, uh, it is a pleasure for me to welcome you to another edition of the Forum 2000 online chat uh, where we uh, discuss the future of freedom and democracy in these uh, difficult times of uh, global pandemic. Uh, today we will uh, focus on Hong Kong where last year 2019 was the year of uh, major protests first triggered by the controversial uh, extradition law and then uh, they developed into a wider pro-democracy pro movement which uh, culminated in uh, the fall, in November, in the, uh, in the district council elections that were uh, won by a landslide by the pro-democracy camp. Uh, the, the protests then uh, seeded at the turn of the year with the growing COVID pandemic and uh, we have seen a, a calm down in, in the city. Uh, now, uh, recently, there has been a political activity uh, growing again. We have seen on the side of the, of the Hong Kong uh, government uh, arrests of several prominent uh, uh, activists, including Martin Lee, Jimmy Lai and others. Uh, and we have also seen a uh, uh, cabinet reshuffle uh, and, and some, some other developments uh, that may be also indicating uh, a movement uh, towards the upcoming uh, legislative elections in September. Uh, to discuss all that, uh, let me welcome with us uh, uh, a prominent uh, student activist, uh, political leader, uh, Secretary General of uh, Demosisto political party that is focused on uh, promoting democracy in Hong Kong. Uh, let me welcome Joshua Wong. Welcome, Joshua. Huh. Yeah, so, thank you for the invitation and nice to meet you. Uh, so, uh, Joshua, uh, can you first tell me how are you, how are you spending the, the time uh, at the moment during the, during the uh, seeding pandemic in Hong Kong? Uh, under an uh, outbreak of COVID-19, which might be difficult for us to mobilize people to, to the street in the past few months. But because of the num number of confirmed cases dropped to zero in Hong Kong in the past few days, people are planning to take back to the street again uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, so uh, do you think that uh, the, uh, the, the, the situation uh, uh, is going to, uh, going to uh, let's say, escalate uh, as, as you mentioned, maybe quite uh, quite quickly again, and then people will will uh, go to streets as uh, in in the same numbers as as was the case uh, last year. Um, not surprised at all with the Hong Kong government crackdown on protests and the police uh, brutality still exists and never being stopped by Beijing authorities. Uh, more than a million of Hong Kongers are planning and ready to take to the street again uh, on this summer. So, so how do you explain yourself uh, the, the fact that the, the, the government has stepped up the, uh, its, its measures against the, the pro-democracy camp? I mentioned the, the arrest of, of, of Martin Lee, of Jimmy Lai, which you, usually were sort of uh, uh, seen as more moderate, uh, they, uh, Martin Lee was not arrested in the past. So how do you explain this, this more uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, stricter position by the, by the government? Um, in the previous day, we always assume youngster uh, might be targeted by the authorities. But now, not only youngster, even upper class elites, including Martin Lee, Margaret, uh, or media typist Jimmy Lai, are arrested and prosecuted. And it just implied and explained how the crackdown is cross generation. Okay, so uh, you you see any you see any strategy behind what what the government is doing? Now the government is taking the advantage of the outbreak of coronavirus and uh, when the global community is paying, uh, paying effort uh, to try to stop the uh, outbreak of the pandemic, Beijing totally 
just hope to silence the voice of dissident, no matter whistleblower or uh, journalist in mainland China, or how an activist or politician in Hong Kong fight for democracy. So how Beijing can finish from it uh, on the global level, by the plate or WHO, on the uh, region level, silencing the voice of activists or uh, what we witnesses. Um. Let's uh, let's now turn to your uh, your own political organization, Demosisto. Uh, last year, in the in the November uh, district council elections, you were excluded from running you yourself personally uh, from running in those elections. Uh, uh, the elections then were uh, even even in, despite that were won by a landslide by the pro democracy camp uh, with a record turnout of of Hong Kong voters. Uh, what uh, is your plan as as political party in uh, for the upcoming uh, legislative elections? Will you be running? Um, uh, instead of uh, considering will Beijing party to run for office, I think more critical and important is uh, will Beijing cancel the election or will Beijing unseat lawmaker uh, after the election? So what my prediction is, if pro-democratic camp in Hong Kong successfully uh, take the majority in the legislative council, Beijing might recognize as the constitutional crisis and might unseat all the democratically elected lawmakers. But if pro-democratic camp can't take the majority in the election, uh, everything will remain, will remain unchanged and Beijing will continue to allow those Beijing loyalists to operate and manipulate the legislative council in Hong Kong. Uh, so, what what is your uh, what is your plan for uh, for that uh, situation? If, uh, for example, the the uh, pro democracy camp wins, uh, you achieve over thirty five seats, which would be the majority of the of the legislation. Yeah. Then, uh, are you and and then as you as you uh, as you suggest the Beijing might, or the Be pro-Beijing government might, uh, let's say, uh, abolish the, the, the Legislative Council, if I understand correctly. What would be your plan then? Um, according to my understanding and what I realize is um, we should continue our protest on street in the upcoming summer and also try our best to maximize the number of seats in the Legislative Council. As you mentioned, hope to have more than 35 uh, seats in the Legislative Council. But more important at the same time is how we could continue the international advocacy. If Beijing decided to unseat uh, all lawmakers in the Legislative Council and appointed lawmaker just like what happened in 1997 in Hong Kong, appointed those legislators to set up the meeting in Shenzhen to decide uh, on Hong Kong affairs, which just implies separation of power uh, fade out already in Hong Kong, and it's also the time to call for international sanction. Uh, so, uh, what should be the what should be the international community doing now and during and after the elections? What would be your your concrete suggestions? Uh, I urge uh, for global community, uh, for the government, just like the United States, they should implement the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. And for European country, they should consider, should they implement global Malisky Act uh, on Hong Kong authorities? Uh, I know it might be under the outbreak of five years, uh, government around the world are trying to spend time to deal with the pandemic. But when Hong Kong being recognized as the global uh, financial center, suddenly the Legislative Council, in the worst scenario, might be relocated suddenly from Hong Kong to Shenzhen, and all legislators might be appointed by Beijing directly instead of elected by EO anymore. So in such worst scenario, international community should take action, because actions speak louder than words. Okay. Uh, uh, returning to, returning to uh, Hong Kong itself, what is the what is the the atmosphere right now? What is the uh, how do people uh, in Hong Kong, uh, your peers, people in your party, or, or fellow students, how do they see the how do they see the situation right now? What is the what is the let's say the public 
mult. Uh, with the outbreak of pandemic continue the violent spread in the past few months and finally uh, situation uh, turned better because of the contribution of civil society it just strengthened the empowerment and the bar- uh, bargaining power of a uh, pro democratic camp in Hong Kong and also and has more and, and more people dissatisfaction to the government for example the dissatisfaction rate to the city's leader Carrie Lam uh, increased from December to March according to the opinion poll conducted by Reuters. Okay, uh, and in in these opinion polls, uh, is there any is there any measure or can you see any spike in the support for pro democracy camp, or for example, or what, what is the levels of the support for pro, -demo pro democracy camp right now? Uh, the the supporting rates of pro democracy camp. Uh, gradually increased in the past few months because uh, everyone realized how Beijing lies resulting people die all over the world and how they manipulate of WHO also let Hong Kong people realize that uh, how uh, the Chinese delegation are, uh, on the global community continue to export the authoritarian discourse uh, to a different kind of uh, world organization which is really disappointing. How do you see the uh, the role of China uh, changing with the with the current uh, COVID pandemic. Yeah. What okay. will be the consequences uh, of the pandemic for China's position yeah. in the world? Uh, during the outbreak of SARS in 2003, China uh, is still not being recognized as the second largest superpower in the world. Uh, but now it's already the largest authoritarian regime in the global community. So compared to the outbreak of SARS in 2003 and the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, in the recent months, I think it just implies how World Health Organization can override a uh, global health issue by national pride and Beijing interests. Uh, in the previous day, the threat of China might be more, more on political spectrum or uh, political field. So for a uh, general public or resident in different country, they might not really care about what's going on on the diplomacy or China. But, but I think the fundamental issue is uh, when, it, when the threat of China is not only related to political rights, it's even affected the daily life and the health issue of every community, family, all over the world in different country. It just let people realize even on the more layman perspective what is meant by the threat of China. Uh, finally, uh, what would be your suggestion for the democracy community around the world to focus on after uh, the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic goes away, let's say, in the end of 2020, beginning of 2021? What should be the priorities? Uh, in the end of 2020 or, the, uh, or early 2021, I think how will be the civil unrest and the tension of Hong Kong and Beijing, which is really critical because Hong Kong is stand in the forefront to confront the authoritarian crackdown from Beijing. So how will be the turnout? No one could imagine. Just like on uh, May or April of 2019, no one could imagine the protest movement in Hong Kong will result in two million people took to the street. But it finally happened. So I think how I strongly encourage the global community put Hong Kong under the global spotlight and uh, uh, continue to follow on what's the update of the fellow protesters in Hong Kong and encourage everyone to stand with Hong Kong. Well, uh, uh, I, I wish you all the best in 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 the in, the, in your efforts. Uh, for sure, the democratic community at least at least uh, uh, the democratic community connected to Forum 2000 stands with you. I wish you to stay safe uh, and uh, wish all the uh, people in Hong Kong uh, a good uh, outcome of uh, of all this and hopefully a better and more democratic future. Thank you for the interview. <coughs>